redo the suspension in this one. What, a little bit of egg. It's always such kind of, huh. And this is what they provide. Mike? Hey, Mike. What front suspension done? Off-road. Why we're down here in California right now. It's definitely a throw together. <laughs> All right. I imagine you guys are wondering why we're down here in California right now. We came down for a super secret meeting because we have some big things planned. And I don't mean just for the two doors. Mike? <laughs> Mike invited us down here. If you don't know this guy's middle cloak, Mike, he has a huge following on YouTube. Huge, I have like 100 subscribers. He has 100 subscribers. I'm one now. We have some big plans in the work over the next six months to a year, and Metal Cloak is going to be a part of it. We are going to have some offerings like we've never done before, and you are going to get excited. Why? If I'm excited, you're definitely gonna be excited. Mike's excited. I'm super Paul's pumped. excited. I'm pumped. <laughs> Everyone's excited. Luckily down here, we got the full meal deal tour. I sprung for the full dollar. Not the 50 cent tour. Full dollar, full dollar. Canadian. Yeah. Joke's on them. And a free lunch. And, and a free, free lunch, lunch. <laughs> at a great Mexican restaurant. And uh, I got a bottle of Gatorade too, so that's pretty good. But it's so damn hot here, I think I would die without it. So we got to see the whole facility. It is fascinating. I love seeing manufacturing in the works and they have this place so dialed in, organized and clean. It's like you almost could eat off the floor. It's phenomenal. So Mike, you're the reason we have two doors. Yeah, so, really? I yeah. Well, a little bit of Nate. Well, a little bit of Nate. But he doesn't actually own a two door. You are it's mostly awesome. yeah. <laughs> you are part of this I mafia we're building. All in. I love the two doors. Just tiny little space, super maneuverable. Love so it. we're not going to be overloading, overlanding. I mean, that's right. My mission in the world of overlanding is to show people that you don't need everything inside your jeep. <laughs> oh, oh shoot! We'll I don't know what to tell you. But regardless, we've got the two door builds. They're going to be phenomenal. We have a bunch of stuff coming. Obviously, you can guess what suspension is going to be underneath it, but stay tuned. It's going to get rad. Hello, sir. Today, we're going to redo the suspension in this one. It's got a kind of a half Mopar, half something else put all together to create this lift. Creaking and cracking and making all kinds of noise and the customer's not happy with it. So we're going to actually put in a metal cloak system, which is all on a bench right here. This is all for the front suspension, pretty much, uh, minus some links. But yeah, we've got the arms, these coils, we got steering, we got the drive shaft. Um, all new shocks. This all comes from Metal Cloak, including the shaft came from Metal Cloak as well. So it should be interesting. We've done a few of these uh, over the last little bit, and this should be a fun build to do. And then, of course, the rears are all over here. Um, I've heard good things, so we've done a couple with a couple other customers, and they're extremely happy with it. Pretty positive that this is going to be a great suspension. brackets, those little tanky drop brackets I took out. The Terraflex system, we would now be bolting in a new drop bracket here to keep the symmetry of the suspension. With the metal cloak, because they've got so much flex and so much move in the joints, they actually recommend going back to the OEM factory hangers. So 
What we'll do now is we'll get the arms, we'll start putting the arms into the factory locations, and then we'll start pulling the springs and shocks out of you. That's a first. <laughs> it's an odd sway bar, like I don't know where they got it from. Three hundred and forty-two, man. Almost lost my finger, but she managed to sew back together, and everything's good. Front suspension done. Other than now we gotta do some steering components, but all the suspension parts are in, coils, arms, shocks, links. Now we move on to the steering. bracket in for the track bar bracket make sure that it doesn't rattle around and move so with that there's a bracket for the steering stabilizer that goes over that location so we've had to kind of reinvent it a little bit so it'll turn both ways without binding up right so a little bit of messing around it it happens but we we usually work through it figure it out with a little help with Lana in there we got it uh, got her done got it figured out we're gonna start the the rear now, unfortunately the front took a little longer than we were expecting just because of the stuff like this. But yeah, we'll go to the back. I don't suspect any major issues in the back. It should go fairly smooth. But famous last words, right? I just jinxed myself, didn't I? I just screwed myself. Absolutely screwed myself right there. Got all the arms in now, uh, the shocks, the links. We're now going to work on removing this track bar and putting in the metal clock track bar. And then, of course, removing this track bar and putting the metal clock actual track bar in. So between this bar and this bracket, that'll all come out. We'll put that all in in a few minutes here. And then I'll need to deal with the brake lines. I'll have to extend them because of the travel in the back now. Metal Cloak supplies the brake lines that you need for the extended length that we're uh, adding here, which is great because then you don't have to source them out or do anything like that. So we'll get all this done and then uh, see how she looks on the ground. Good. Joe D 
these out. And then I'll have to drill two more over here. All right, so this all gets bolted in. And then the main bolt will go back in and support the center. And then the new track bar bracket and we'll be a lot higher, right? The shocks that we're running in this setup in the, in the rig right now, we do not need to change the brake lines. If you run the other two sets that they have, the other sets have a longer travel, and then you, then you definitely need to change these up. For right now, they are good. They're not pulling on it. So with this setup, we're fine with the stock OEM brake lines. The other shocks that they have have so much more travel, right? So then they have to be done. Uh, this gentleman will probably later down the road change out these shocks to a longer travel. When he does that, then we'll change out his lines. Throw some tires on the rear and the rear's done. Lo and behold, I am definitely surprised that when I got back from hanging out with Metal Cloak in Sacramento this week, that there was already a Jeep on the hoist getting Metal Cloak. Excellent coincidence, fully unplanned surprisingly. So this is a good buddy of mine's new Jeep. He finally decided to move away from the TJ and he got a Gladiator. He's got big plans for this, but he told me when he got it, he basically brought it up here, got the Kraken first thing, and he was like, I'm gonna do the Rubicon this summer. I'm like, I don't really think it's a good idea, man, because I've seen underneath your Jeep. Whatever place built it, I don't even know what was going on. It had some springs, it had shock extensions, it had a track bar from a different brand, it had a track bar bracket in the rear by another different brand. There was probably four brands under this and it performed horribly. I'm like, what do you wanna do with your vehicle? Do you wanna go over landing? Do you wanna put a tent on the back? He's like, no, I don't care. I wanna go off-roading, I wanna go do the Rubicon this summer and I wanna do wheeling like I did in my TJ. I'm like, well, it's a good thing you bought a vehicle that's the same size. So we decided, the good way to get him in was with the Metal Cloak Game Changer three and a half inch system. And with that, added the new drive shaft because we have enough articulation, we needed it. And with shocks, we started off economical because he wasn't planning on doing a suspension. He bought a Jeep that was lifted. He figured he could just go. So we went with the Rock Sport Reds from Metal Cloak. So these are their economical shock options. They've got about two above this, plus a Fox shock you can pick. But for now, he's got these because they have a lot of long travel. At least he'll be able to utilize this on the trail. Three and a half lift front and rear, all the bump stop extensions. Now, some things are done a little differently than our normal TerraFlex stuff. We did all the arms right off the bat because this Jeep is gearing to rock crawl and off-road. This is not an overland vehicle. We want to be right off the bat as much flex as we can get. And I didn't think this was a candidate for a long arm system when we just sprung that he needed a lift on him out of nowhere. If we come to the front, we ran into a few issues. So originally, there wasn't gonna be the track bar bracket we always put on our TerraFlex lifts. The reason is, with the metal cloak lift, this bracket takes away from how much up travel we can jam in to the frame. With their geometry, they don't add a bracket here till you're at four and up inches. The reason it's here is whoever did the track bar originally, it was loose for so long it beat the hole to death. And that's not even a pun or a joke. They then drilled the hole out oversized. Then they put a metal spacer to fill up the oversizedness of the hole. It was impossible to put a proper bolt and track bar in. So what we had to do is we basically added the TerraFlex front track bar bracket, which is what was in stock, 
we properly drilled the hole so we could mount this stabilizer. Then we were able to use the raised up hole to mount the track bar. Now everything's tight, it's not gonna come loose and everything's aligned as you can see. We uh, had them splurge a bit, so we did the metal cloak billet clamp because it just looks better. Nobody wants those U-bolts. We've got the tie rods because I knew if he's going to the Rubicon, first thing he is gonna do is smash this right into a rock. I had him covered. We replaced it so he can smash it right into a rock. And then with that, we just did the kit. So we changed the drag link as well at the same time. These are Metal Cloak's newest sway bar link. This is their upgraded premium sway bar link. It is massive, adjustable, so you can fix the height so that you know at full droop, you're not gonna accidentally flip the sway bar and get it jammed and a whole other catastrophe happen. At least you can kind of dial it into what your suspension's doing. And this is drooping quite a lot because of all the arms and all this being flexible. Now that we've got all the front in, and you'll notice the coils are much different. You'll see how they've got these little coils up here, bigger coils down here. So when we're on the ground, most of these coils are gonna sit on themselves like a coil bucket. The reason that is, this lift is really geared to rock crawling and articulation. Because it has those coils that unseat when you're doing full flex, your coil spring doesn't get loose and fall out of the vehicle. I don't know, you probably have a buddy with an XJ who's had it happen, that's what happens. This fixes that. We then have their adjustable bump stops, which are easy to change. If he decides to cut his fender, wants to jam the tire up more, we can take out a bump stop and go up higher. This is basically the starting point for his front. Then to the back. Sorry, I missed the bus, I had to walk. Back here, we took out the other brand's track bar bracket that was here, because we're gonna try and make everything match. With it, we've got the Metal Cloak, obviously gold track bar bracket to raise that up. We have the other track bar in here that is curved, so we're gonna fit his 37 inch. By the way, when he bought this vehicle, guess what it didn't have? You're right a 37 inch spare tire. That's real helpful. We've got a really good thick coil. These aren't even the HD coils to carry more weight because he said he's not gonna do a rack and he's not gonna do a tent. So we did not put the heavier coils in. What he is gonna do is shorten this bed down, which will be really good. We've got the extended links on the back. We've got all the control arms. We've got the extended shocks. The kit came with stainless steel braided brake lines. We chose not to put them in because right now we have a ton of movement in the brake line and it's holding our ABS wire really well. And this is full droop. So it's not gonna go any farther. So the brakes, we like to keep as many OEM parts as possible because they just last a really long time. The reason those brake lines are in the kit is because if we had to put on Metal Cloak six pack shocks or even the new blacks, we would have more travel and we would need 100% the brake lines. So he has room to grow. We're just gonna give him the brake lines. So if he decides to change out his shocks, after he gets back, we can put them in then. But to keep the cost down and the labor time, we put them in the glove box. He's much happier about it. All in all, Mike's gonna wrap it up, dump her down. We'll see how it sits height-wise. He'll go through and tighten some things, chuck the spare up, and then he'll go take it on some jumps. Jumps? I get to jump this one? Well, yeah, it's not my Jeep. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Chris okay, won't wait, mind. Wait, no, we need to jump this one and then jump the two door. Well, Chris has a body shot. So, even if it goes poorly, he can fix it. Oh uh, yeah, he'll just chop up the track. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But, regardless, stay tuned. We have a lot more fun stuff coming.